Good morning, I just returned from London and I'm back into dealing with that jet lag stuff. Um, but it's all good, I actually had a really good week. Um, even though I only came back on Tuesday, uh, make another video about the London trip because it was actually really awesome and um, yeah, got to tape that cool stuff with Joe Malone and see the city and explore the brands and all of that. I was in a conversation uh, over email and with someone who has a store, a brand owner, and we were talking about LTV, um, lifetime value. Well, actually, let me back up a little bit even more. So the he, I was connected with him through email through somebody else um, who said that you know he's having some profitability issues within the brand and they're trying to figure out how to um they had already hit like seven figure line but they're trying to figure out how to make be more profitable how to sort of create um more consistency uh we may or may not get on a call but this was all through email anyway um he when he wrote back he realized he was like yeah you know i think we have an ltv problem or things that we're trying to work on we got to work on our lifetime value we have to work on um you know our nurturing and things like that and um yeah, and then he also said, uh, I think those were actually the main two things that he said. Um, and I, I was like, 100%, you know, we should talk about that. So it was, you know, making me think about lifetime value. And we ended up getting into a conversation about how to do that. You know, how to create more lifetime value in your customers so that obviously the business can be more profitable, um, more revenue, all of that type of stuff, more consistent, more longevity, more stability, um, everything like that. So it really, I just, it got me thinking about how, when we think of lifetime value and why I think it's so brands think about it and they focus on it is because the idea is that you're making more money off of somebody or how much money is some a customer worth? You know, like how much are they spending at the brand over a period of time? I guess a lifetime. Um, and so if the reason that you'd wanna calculate this is because if you're spending a certain amount on marketing and you know how much it costs to get someone to your website, whether that's a dollar a click or less or up to $30 for acquiring someone to make a purchase or more. I mean, there are companies that are down to even lose money on acquiring a customer because they understand the lifetime value. For instance, a McDonald's, I mean, we don't need to be advertised McDonald's really because it's everywhere. It's like in you from birth basically. But um, the amount that they spend to advertise to me is probably nothing compared to the amount I would spend or someone might spend across their entire life, right? Um, at the with them and then you're buying it for your kids or whatever and, and Nike is very similar they you know they 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 probably know how much it costs to get someone to make their first purchase and what on average how many times people buy shoes on average how many times people will buy their clothes on average over the course of their lifetime and again the reason that this is important is because it'll help justify and figure out your marketing costs because um, it's not just about that first purchase, right? It's not just about saying, oh, we spent X, uh, X amount on advertising or X amount on Facebook, you know, X amount, which is advertising, but you know, X amount on marketing. And uh, we brought in, you know, we spent 10,000 on marketing and we sold 30,000 in product. That could have been all off first time buys. Maybe it was on repeat buys, but you know, if we're talking just about someone coming to the store for the first time, but that's not where the relationship ends. And in, for a lot of companies, um, especially the companies that I like to work with, their ability to have people come back and buy more stuff is where all the money is made, all the profitability is made. You know, average order values are bumped up. And that's really where you're gonna make most of the money. Because if you're focusing just on your revenue line for the brand, you know, it's not, one, it's probably not a brand then because a the brand is more about emotion and more about lo loyalty and LTV. Um, so if you're focusing just on revenue, um, it's gonna be really hard to scale and it's gonna be really hard to make enough money to really feel like, okay, yes, I've we're, we're making in all the money that we wanna make. 
Um, so it got me thinking about some LTV strategies and I was saying to him like, you know, what, uh, no matter what platform you pick to do your nurturing, whether it's your Instagram, whether it's Facebook, whether it's uh, email, you know, don't be everywhere or YouTube, don't be everywhere. Just pick a few places to be at the beginning until you really can, your team's ability to make enough material is grow so that you can be on more than a couple platforms. Um, but I think sometimes where people go wrong with LTV is that they think that it's just the, so how do you get people to have that exchange when we talk about value and lifetime value? You want customers to bring you lifetime value through dollar spend and, and, and yeah, through basically dollar spend. But in order to really do that successfully, I think you need to also have the flip side of that which is how can you as a store, as a product brand, you know, have lifetime value the reverse for your customers? Example of this is, well, there's a lot of ways to put out value. One is through content that they care about, whether that's videos, photos, articles, maybe some cool collabs, really caring about the material that you're making, how it looks, who you're hiring, paying people well, good experiences, packaging, customer support, supply chain, always working on your supply chain, making sure that your product is amazing, um, asking for feedback. Like, I mean, it's infinite. The amount of things that you can do to make sure that you're, you're showing up at the highest level of value for customers as possible. Um, and I think that that is really the best way to then have your lifetime value be higher from from the customers, like that your customer perspective on lifetime value is a lot higher. So basically what I'm saying is, if you're, ta if you're trying to figure out your lifetime, like making LTV more, i.e. making sure that each customer that comes in the door spends more than just that first purchase and spends thousands if not million, I mean, at least thousands in your brand across the lifetime, their lifetime with you, which is that ideally their entire life, as soon, you know, like whenever they find your product, that they will tell people about it, rebuy from you for their whole life, which a lot of brands have succeeded in that space. The ones that do it the best, because then most of that is all profitability, I mean, except for the fact that you have to pay your net costs, but at least you're not having to worry about um, acquisition costs, which are super expensive, as I was saying. Um, so the ones that have done that the most successfully have continued to evolve, continue to use all of their channels of value to make sure that their customers are having the best possible experiences. And they've kind of reverse engineered, you could say, what lifetime value is. Because it's not just about what you're getting lifetime value, it's about th what they're getting lifetime value. And if you do that right, then you won't have to worry about lifetime value basically at all because you'll be providing value for a lifetime and you'll get rewarded by people buying more stuff feeling more into it, being more connected to the brand, telling their friends. I mean, look at Apple. It's like, unless they go under and something really terrible happens, I think even Brad Press probably couldn't take them down at this point. I could see them being kicked out of the number one spot within my lifetime, but the amount that, the exchange level that they have with their customers in terms of value, i.e. we give them money and they give us cool stuff is, at an unprecedentedly high rate. They've set the bar incredibly high and I think it's pushed other brands to really have to feel like they need to do the same. The Nikes and you know the Adidas and all of those companies that are really also trying to be or playing at that level. So I hope you're having a good morning. I'm gonna have some coffee and uh, have a great week.